If the communication with your wife or partner is breaking down, meaning constant arguments at each other's throats or silent treatment with nothing to talk about or connect on, then there are three simple steps you must know about. And most men get this completely wrong. These three simple steps helped me fix my marriage, made me millions of dollars and helped me become a leader for my wife, my daughter and my team. A man that the people around me appreciate and respect all through improving the skill of communication. Now, before I share these three steps with you, you must understand one thing. They are shockingly simple and you can start using them today, but it's gonna require a commitment from you to become a better man, to become a leader, a better husband, a better father, a better human being. So if you're ready to take your marriage, your business, your life to the next level and learn to master the skill of communication, then in today's podcast episode, you're gonna learn the three steps to improve communication in your marriage. The first step here is to ask great questions. What we tend to do in our relationships is something called mind reading. I've done this for years with my wife, even though I've helped over a thousand men fix their marriages. I'll finish a long day, go downstairs from the home office and the house might be a mess. Now, instantly what's gonna happen is a default story occurs in my mind. That story is, my wife doesn't care. She's being lazy all day. The house is a mess, there's dishes in the sink. Now I know when I question that story that it's not true, but these are default responses that cause triggers in our relationships. And then that response causes a reaction, which is getting angry, yelling, using a sarcastic tone, an argument or something that causes disconnection in the relationship. It's a form of shitty communication. This all happens because we make an assumption as to what our partner's intentions are, as to what they're thinking and as to what they're feeling. The simple solution here is to ask great questions. It's to challenge assumptions and not make any realistic assumptions until you've established the facts. You don't know why your partner might have not done something. You don't know what they're thinking. You don't know what they're feeling. Until you ask questions around that, you're simply living in the land of pretend. And we do this so often in our relationships. We expect our partner to know what we're thinking and they expect us to know what they're thinking. This is a massive breakdown in communication. So how do you ask great questions? Well, you say things like, help me understand. Help me understand what's going on for you. I'd love to know more about what made you do that. I'd love to know more about what's happened today. How are you feeling today? Tell me more about what's happening. How does that make you feel? What are you thinking about? Ultimately, you're asking open-ended questions to understand why somebody is acting the way they're acting, to understand how they're feeling, to understand what they're thinking about. You're trying to ask questions to understand their perspective and their world view. Often a breakdown in communication, especially with arguments, is two opposing world views. I've had a long stressful day. I've got the weight of the world on my shoulders. I go and hang out with my wife. She's had a long stressful day dealing with the housework, the child. We both don't feel understood. We both don't feel appreciated. We both don't feel supported. And instead of coming together and asking, how was your day? What are you thinking about how you're feeling? We think, ah, she doesn't understand. She thinks, ah, he doesn't understand. And there's this collision that happens. A collision where we're both stuck feeling disconnected. We assume the person knows how we're feeling. But when you think about it, how could your wife know how you feel if she hasn't gone into a business all day, hiring, firing, bills, putting out fires? And how can you expect to know what your wife's thinking and feeling if you haven't been a stay at home dad, dealing with a crying child, dealing with the pressure of getting up every night, dealing with the pressure of constant dirty laundry and all the shit we think is simple, when in reality, it's not for her. She has a worldview, you have a worldview. And the only way you can understand each other's worldviews is by asking great questions. It's by challenging assumptions. And every time you don't have the facts, reminding yourself, I'm just mind reading here. I don't know why the fuck she's acting that way. She doesn't know why the fuck I'm acting this way because we don't ask. A really simple way you can implement this at the end of the day, when I go downstairs, I sit with my wife. It doesn't happen all the time. I forget sometimes. And I just say, how was your day? She says, it's fine. No, like seriously, how was your day? Like, are you okay? Um, I'm all right. Well, what happened? What happened today? Tell me more about your day. How was Talia? 
What was the hardest part of your day? What was the best part of your day? Then she'll open up and say, oh, well, how was your day? Well, I really struggled. It was, a, I had to fire someone. I'm super stressed, but don't worry, I've got it. What this does is it creates, it creates reality and facts of where you're both at. And so many men struggle to do this in their relationships. It begins with eliminating mind reading by challenging assumptions and by asking great questions so you can understand someone. Communication comes from understanding. And when you understand someone, you can connect with them on a much deeper level. Quick point on this one as well is that if you don't feel understood, you don't feel appreciated, you don't feel respected, you can be damn sure that your partner feels a lack of those things too. So if you want more appreciation, love, respect, understanding, if you want them to not mind read you and assume what you're going through, then you gotta start by giving them what they want. Such a powerful tool and you do that by asking great questions. The second step here, which so many men fuck up, is using curious empathy. Curious empathy is broken down into three different parts. The first one is tonality. It's the way that you ask questions. It's the way that you communicate. If I go downstairs and I ask my wife the same set of words, I can do it in different ways. I can see that the house is a mess. I can be triggered and upset at her and I can go, how's your day? And I can do it in a judgmental tone or I can look around and go, fuck, this makes me triggered. I'm upset. I want to communicate negatively and I can go, hey babe, how was your day? And just that change of tonality it's curious and it's empathetic. Now, this is really hard to do if you're a successful guy, because in business, a lot of the time, we don't have time for empathy. We're like, dude, what the fuck have you done? You haven't done your job properly, get it done. But at home, we can't always operate the same way. If I show up to my wife with this much energy I'm giving you on this video, it's very different to how I should show up with my, my daughter and her. So curious empathy means that you're curious and you're empathetic. The second part of this is your body language, right? If I give my wife a dirty look, when I ask her in a curious, empathetic way, well, then there's no empathy there. You can say, how was your day? But I'm looking at her like, what the fuck is this? Why, why haven't you done what I expect you to do? And the third step here is genuinely, genuinely wanting to know through curiosity what they're going through. So it sounds like this, like you're, you're struggling with communication, you ask great questions, and you don't just ask a great question, you ask it in a way where you're curious and you're empathetic. So this is what it sounds like. Hey, is everything okay? I'm fine. Okay, I know you really well. It's a very low, like calm, like it's like you're talking to a mate, mate, it's all good. I got your back. Like, it's, it's fine, we got this. Somebody's really upset or triggered. You go, nah, mate, we've got this. You pat them on the back. It's the same energy you bring into your relationship with your partner. I, look, I know you. Like, what's going on for you? Are you okay? My wife says, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. It's like, babe, I know you. I know you're not fine. What happened today? So now I'm pairing those great questions. Tell me more, what happened? How are you feeling? What are you thinking about? I'm pairing that with a tonality where I'm curious and empathetic. Now tell me more about it. That must be really hard. Like, and I, and I won't always agree with it. You gotta make a distinction here when you're talking to your partner. Like, I'm not a victim. I used to be a victim. A lot of men are, but I used to be a victim and I'm not now. So when I hear someone complaining and bitching and moaning, I just wanna fix it. You gotta be really careful here when you're communicating with your loved ones to know whether your partner just wants to vent or whether they want you to fix the problem. So part of curious empathy you can use here is go, is this a conversation where you just wanna vent or is it a conversation where you want me to help you find a solution? Such a powerful tool. Sometimes your partner just wants to bitch and moan. And that's part of great communication is giving them a shoulder to cry on and someone to talk. So yeah, how can I help you? Like, what do you need from me? It's curious, it's empathetic, and it shows them that you care through your tonality, through your body language, through the words that you use. So remind yourself to communicate better, be curious, be empathetic. Yeah, so what's going on? Like you're patting a friend on the back, bring that same energy into your relationship. It works wonders. This leads into the next point on curious empathy before we move on. And the next step is extremely important, which is you cannot be triggered when something is interesting. When you're curious, you find it interesting. My daughter's two years old at the time of recording this. When she sees a new bug or a spider, she goes, oh, spider. And she's in wonder, she's interested and intrigued by that thing. You can't have terrible communication when you're interested or intrigued by something. Terrible communication comes from being triggered, being angry, being frustrated, being judgmental. So when you're curious, you're interested. And when you find something interesting, it cannot trigger you. When you're curious, it allows you to see that person's perspective. It allows you to establish their current world view. And it's really important here that you don't make them wrong for it, even if you know they're wrong. Because when people feel attacked, they defend. 
Empathy means even if you know they're in the wrong, even if you know they're fucking up the situation, you communicate calmly, curiously, empathetically, which takes you to the promised land, which is the outcome you want, connection in that relationship. If you want a custom roadmap on how to improve your communication so you can have more intimacy, sex, connection, love, which is also gonna help you improve your communication elsewhere as a leader in your business, as a father, as a man, then it's a lot easier with the custom roadmap. If you go to the first link down below in the description, you'll be able to fill out a quick quiz and book a coaching session with my Empowered Man team. And on that session, we'll build out your custom Empowered Man roadmap. We've used it with over a thousand men on how you can become a better father, a better husband, a better man. A man who's communicating well in his marriage and in his business, a man who is successful in every area. So if you wanna become a better leader, a better communicator, go down below right now and book a coaching session with the Empowered Man team. The third step, no one gets this right, is to schedule time to communicate. In my relationship with Rosie, we started off seven years ago in love. We wanted to know everything about each other. We wanted to spend time together. I'm sure at the beginning of your relationship, it was vastly different when there weren't kids involved, when your business or career wasn't so stressful or time consuming. But over years, that begins to change. And if you don't schedule time to have conversations, to talk about these things, then it can be a recipe for disaster. What I do every single Saturday or Sunday with my wife is I have a date night. It's typically Saturday every evening. Now we have a daughter, we've organized either a babysitter or family to help out. That gives us space to be present with each other and intentionally communicate. There's a difference between communicating with a screaming child, a stressful work day, and having intentional time to look into each other's eyes and have a conversation. Every Sunday morning, we have something called a love meeting. I've done videos on this in the past. If you scroll through the podcast, you'll be able to find them. As a matter of fact, I'll drop a resource down below where you can download our love meeting framework and check it out for free. And basically what we do is we have this time together to talk about what's going on for each other. We combine the first two steps, asking great questions with curious empathy. Some of the questions you can ask are, how was this week for you? How did I show you love, appreciation, support, understanding, and respect? We call that laser focused. Did you feel those things from me? How could I have given you more of those things? What do you need to see from me next week to feel more love? What am I doing well? What am I doing poorly? It's almost like having a meeting at work. You have reviews every three to six months with your team members. We don't do this in our relationships. When you have intentional time to have a conversation with your significant other, you can work through things that have built up. I don't know about you in my relationship, I would just let things build up for so long. Rosie would let them build up, I would let them build up, and then we'd explode at each other because we didn't communicate what was on our minds. We would mind read and expect the person to know what was going on. We wouldn't ask questions about how we're going, and then all those built up things would cause more damage and more pain in the future. How often do you do this in your relationship? You let things build up, you don't communicate them, and the reason that doesn't happen is because you don't have the time. You're busy, you're stressed, you've got kids, you've got a business, I get it. You've got to schedule the time. You can start with 15 minutes, 20 minutes, ideally 60 minutes a week to have a coffee, have a meal, just the two of you to communicate about what's going on for both. And in these conversations, you want to intentionally listen. Like when was the last time you intentionally looked someone in the eyes and gave them everything, your attention, your sight, your hearing, put all of your focus on them. For so many men, they're thinking about work, they're thinking about football, they're thinking about insert thing here. They're not actually present with that person. When you combine intentional time to have a conversation and communicate with active listening, looking them in the eyes, hearing what they're saying, processing it, feeding it back to them by saying, this is what I've heard you say. That person feels heard, they feel seen, they feel understood. And then by default, they're gonna ask you how you're going, which is what we want as men. We want to be appreciated, seen, heard, respected. So now you're both getting that from each other. It's intentional, it's planned, you know it's gonna happen each week. Even if you had a shit week, things built up, you were busy, you were stressed, you get to work through it. So now it's built up, you bring it back down, and that avoids any arguments, disagreements, or blow-ups in the future. When you combine these three simple steps, your communication completely transforms 
and you go into a frame of connection in your marriage or relationship. Let's recap them one more time so you can implement them today. The first one is to ask great questions. Every time you have an assumption of what they're thinking, feeling, why they're doing something, that's called mind reading. Challenge that assumption, ask great questions to understand them. Step two, when you ask those questions, do it from a frame of curious empathy. It's your tonality, it's your body language. You're trying to understand that person and make them feel like they can open up to you. What's going on for you, are you okay? And then step three, take the first two steps and schedule this in. Every week, have intentional time where you pay attention to that person. It's just the two of you, no distractions, actively listening to each other. Practice it throughout the week, practice it in those moments, practice it moment to moment, and you will become a master communicator, which is gonna mean more sex, more intimacy, more love, more understanding, more respect, the relationship you fucking deserve. If you want a custom roadmap on how to improve your communication so you can have more intimacy, sex, connection, love, which is also gonna help you improve your communication elsewhere as a leader in your business, as a father, as a man, then it's a lot easier with the custom roadmap. If you go to the first link down below in the description, you'll be able to fill out a quick quiz and book a coaching session with my Empowered Man team. And on that session, we'll build out your custom Empowered Man Roadmap. We've used it with over a thousand men on how you can become a better father, a better husband, a better man. A man who's communicating well in his marriage and in his business, a man who is successful in every area. So if you wanna become a better leader, a better communicator, go down below right now and book a coaching session with the Empowered Man team.